Hi, everybody. This is Rob Goff, CFSP, the Executive Director for Washington State Funeral Directors Association. It's time for a very special, brand new episode of Member Talks. Today's episode is fun. We're on location. We are at Butterworth's Arthur A. Wright Funeral Chapel on Queen Anne Hill, Seattle, Washington. We have Jason Engler. Jason's a friend of ours. It's been on the show before. Jason has come on uh, has talked about some of the history of cremation, uh, some of the different uh, aspects to cremation that have we've seen throughout the years. And we had this idea to sit down at a very historic, very beautiful, older funeral home and hear the story, the history of cremation in Washington, the history of cremation in Seattle in particular. And uh, we thought, who better to, to share that story with us than our friend Jason? So, Jason, welcome back to Member Talks. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. Even though it's virtually, I'd rather be there sitting with you at that beautiful facility. But uh, but here we are. I'm all the way down in Austin, Texas, and you're having fun in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'd love to get you back up here for sure. That's, it'll happen. Uh, it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, last time we saw you up here was for the Cana convention when it was in Seattle, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. But uh, you've got such an interesting and unique perspective on cremation. So let's. I want to dive right into it because Washington state is a state that is, has a very, very high cremation rate. And for many reasons, there's been lots of debates, lots of stories about why cremation is so high in Washington, at least that why the rate of cremation is so high in Washington. But what we don't really get involved with, what we don't really hear the story of is how cremation began in Washington. Most of us around here know that, you know, it's, it's well, cremation's cremation. It's a viable option for disposition. Uh, it's an option that um, has been around forever, but we don't know the roots of it, at least in the state of Washington. And so, um, you know, before that we began this, this conversation, you and I spoke and, and said, you know, next time you're in Seattle, let's, let's do one of these podcasts and let's talk about the roots of cremation in Washington state. And so uh, you invited me to come up and, and meet with Amy Fortier uh, here at uh, Butterworth's um, Arthur A. Wright Funeral Chapel. And she gave us a wonderful tour. We're going to show aspects of that tour or different clips from that tour here momentarily, but I'd really love to hear the story of cremation in the state of Washington. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, Seattle and Washington are, are very unique in that they started cremation pretty early, not definitely not the earliest in the country, not the earliest on the West Coast, and not even the earliest in the Pacific Northwest, but but definitely early uh, with regard to an overall scope. Um, the first crematory there being built in 1905 it was, it really, cremation took off and became a tradition very, very quickly. Uh, I was, I, I read not too long ago, a, a newspaper article, um, as nerds do, we read old articles about, about things that we're interested in, don't we? Um, but, but one of the things is that this, this writer uh, in the Seattle Republican said that the Western spirit, which is intensely progressive and pregnant with independence, is doubtless a great incentive to burial by cremation. And, and that's something that definitely added to the desire and the acceptance of cremation very early. He said, um, um, continued on also Seattle's youth and the fact that she is a cosmopolitan city aids in bringing this about. So, so definitely one of the things that, that uh, is, is indicative of, of Washington is that, you know, that free spirit. And, and you see that in so many different things, whether it's politics or religion or, um, you know, the exploration, the, the spirit of the spirit of new things and, and good things and uh, being on the cutting edge of, of the world. So that that's, you know, cremation is what started, what started, uh, that's what started cremation in, in, in Seattle for sure. So the first crematory there being built in 1905 was, you know, it was, it wasn't a lot of buzz. People weren't so upset about it. Like they were in a lot of the other parts of the country. It was fairly, um, fairly simple. They started the, the crematory adjacent there to Mount Pleasant 
Cemetery, uh, which is a uh, an old uh, Odd Fellows Cemetery, and there's a Jewish cemetery that's connected there. So, you know, th- there wasn't a lot of argument, a lot of a lot of disagreement, like there were in a lot of the other parts of the country. So, okay. um, so, so uh, Arthur Wright uh, oversaw and built this facility. Uh, it's, it was a chapel on the upper level. Uh, the the cremation chambers in the back. And then on the lower level, the columbarium was built soon after the, the building was completed. And then right behind was a small office, which was basically, it was a house that had been, um, had been uh, converted into an office. And over time that grew, that expanded and became, um, you know, became kind of the, the, the focal point for cremation in the state of Washington. Um, just a few years later, he expanded himself also and uh, went down into Tacoma and partnered with the Tacoma Cremation Society uh, and, and Oakwood Cemetery there, which is now Oakwood Hill Cemetery, uh, built the, the second crematory in the state of Washington there in 1908. So, so that area is very rich with the, with the history of cremation. Uh, in in the Pacific Northwest and in in the state of Washington, especially. Well, that's really uh, just amazing to think. And and you know, we look at today. I mean, I was just in Tacoma today, uh, and now I'm in Seattle. And it's when you think about it today, you know, we're, we're not talking very far away. It took me about 30 minutes or so to get from point A to point B. But back in 1905, yeah. To be able to go to Tacoma was an all-day excursion. I mean, right. and to, and to have the foresight to say, okay, um, you know, we've got the call, we've got the demand, and we've got the people that that are wanting this form of disposition. Uh, let's give it to them, and let's do it in a position uh, or in a in a location uh, of Tacoma. I, that's awesome. That's really cool. And, and it's a, it's important to note that the the cremation society of Tacoma and the the Washington cremation society, which had the the uh, crematory there in Seattle, they the crematories were managed by the same person, uh-huh. but the societies, the associations that kind of um, oversaw them were were a little bit different. And definitely, Seattle was much larger with regard to volume and. Um, facility and that sort of thing. So, um, so definitely, you know, definitely some differences there. Um, um, but even so to, to have the people of Tacoma to come together with the funds, the, the people of the cremation society of Tacoma to come together with the funds to, to put this, uh, crematory together was, you know, that's fantastic. It's, it is surprising for, for it being a smaller town as compared to Seattle, especially. Mm -hmm. Jason, what was the driving force for people wanting cremation uh, in this area? I mean, we hear now, you know, people choose cremation because of cost. Well, maybe, uh, but I don't think it's necessarily cost. I think, you know, people, they, you also hear people say that people choose cremation because of uh, religious tradition or, or family tradition, maybe. Uh, maybe it's convenience. But what was the driving force at that time that said, we want to cremate our dead and we're going to figure out a way to do that uh, here in Seattle? What, what was that driving force back then? Do you know? So, certainly cost was something that, that was factored in. It was not the only reason though. Um, it, it had to be, it had to be like the, the writer of that article and the, the Seattle Republican said that it's that free spirit of the, you know, of the Pacific Northwest. Um, mm-hmm. That's the thing about people who, who had gone to Seattle uh, that, that picked up and left wherever they were from, you know, looking back at that time, there were very few people from Seattle. You know, most were, most were people who had, um, had, had moved their lives to that area and they were they were interested in that area because it's a new start it's a new world it's a new a, a fresh new look at everything and so so that had a that had a lot to do with it no doubt and i would say that that was even more uh, of a driver than the cost um, was the fact that this is something this hey this is a new idea let's do this um, and then in addition there there was a, there was an early acceptance by uh, funeral 
directors as well in the area. You know, one of the things that that um, in some parts of the country that slowed the the prospect of of crematories was funeral directors in the area um, not being completely okay with cremation. And now, now, mind you, a lot of the earlier funeral directors were more accepting of it than than funeral directors in the you know the '60s through through '90s for sure. Um, but but it was just a very different uh, very different acceptance there in in Seattle. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to do is. Um look at some video that we took and kind of talk a little bit about that history uh, in that video that we saw. Um, We had the experience of being able to go down, down to the far basement of, of Arthur A. Wright's uh, Butterworth's funeral chapel and see the original columbarium that's still there today. Um, and, and they were kind enough, uh, here to allow us to do a little bit of filming and so that we can share that on, on this episode. And, and what I'd like to do is to try to, uh, see if we can maybe look at some of that together Mm -hmm. and get some ideas of, um, just kind of what it is that we're looking at. Uh, yeah, what this history, as, what this history yeah, looks like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd like to, so, and I'd like to bounce bounce back to uh, here after we after we do that. Kind of how that um, the cremation movement expanded. This is the, yeah. um, you know, what we'll see in these pictures, and then and I'll share as well some uh, some historic photos of the of kind of the same areas and what the original crematory building looked like. But um, but from there, it you know it really grew in a lot of other areas of the of the city and of the state so so i'd love for us to be able to bounce back on that and and chat about that as well yeah absolutely so i don't jason uh is 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 it possible are you able to see what i'm seeing uh, which is a a video of amy talking yep there's amy yep hi amy there's there's amy (laughs) (laughs) so uh you've been here before you know kind of where we're looking at and um Kind of give us a, I'm going to keep her volume down uh, because it was very echoey, but kind of tell us what you're seeing there and and describe what you're seeing. Yeah. So this is the, this is the addition to the, uh, to the columbarium on the upper level of where the chapel and crematory used to sit. So actually right where that room is that you're looking at, that's about the location of the original uh, cremation chambers, the original committal room, and this this area um, was was originally begun in uh, the 1930s. So this this upper level was built um, above and around the original. Um, columbarium, which is on the lower level. Uh, the far curtains on the other side that you see there is was room for uh, expansion, which they never really got to because they they um, kind of saturated uh, their their area. Hopefully someday they'll they'll um, develop that and enlarge it. But uh, those stairs there to the right are the ones that go down to the lower level of the of the crematory building. But the the entrance to the columbarium is that archway there that's uh, that was center uh, just in that. That last little still there. Uh, that is how you enter into the building of the columbarium. So families coming to visit loved ones within the columbarium can enter into that that space. Uh, again, this big open area, um, likely made for committal services and that sort of thing. Um, and then sure. the columbaria spaces uh, and chambers built on in, in the areas. So that's not that's not as historic. It's still historic. It's 1930s, and for yeah. you know a lot of parts of the country, that's pretty historic. Um, but but for um, for that particular facility, that's kind of a newer area of the of the building for sure. Yeah. So we've walked through the archway, and these are the steps that lead us down into the what is the basement, but is the original columbaria. Right. Um, we're going to stop and look at these two pictures on the wall, and uh, hopefully the glare is not so bad. But uh, see if you can describe a little bit of what we're seeing in these pictures. Sure. These are these are the. Um, if you want to pause it there, that would be that would be fantastic. I don't know if you can pause it without it. Um, I'm going to see but, if I can. I'm not sure how I do that. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Um, so that first picture is the selection room of the original Butterworth Mortuary, which was down on First Avenue uh, in downtown mm-hmm. Seattle. So that is a that is a really cool image of a selection room. I'd love for them to be able to digitize that somehow. I 
have a photo that I took of it that that I've been able to edit pretty well. It was kind of a darker day, uh, and so there wasn't as much of a glare. But that is a fantastic photo. They've got some really, really gorgeous um, Renaissance style um, uh, Italian kind of caskets on their on their selection room floor there. And in that photo, that is the original chapel of the downtown. Uh, funeral home of Butterworth as well. So both of those photos are specific to the Butterworth mortuary. Now, E.R. Butterworth, he's an entire discussion on his own. Um, he is, he was, he was one of the earliest funeral directors, one of the most innovative funeral directors in the country, uh, all the way up in that part of the country. And he was, um, he was uh, quite a character. Uh, he, he left the the um the funeral home to his his sons each of his sons took over a the particular part of the the um the funeral home operations and that was you talk about an interesting uh story that's the butterworth story all the way around so after that building there was actually another building that they that they built up on capitol hill and that that facility still stands this facility is still there the lowest level actually where, where the columbarium mausoleum and crematory were located uh is now um kell's irish pub uh that huh. and you can still go down in that part of the, the basement although there's no um no uh remains of the the funeral home whatsoever sure Sure, uh, but then they when they moved to Capitol Hill, that that building is still standing as well. A uh, big part of it's the law office. The chapel was converted into a, a nightclub for some time, uh, called the Chapel Bar, and then since then has become uh, a bar called the the Pine Box, uh, which was a um, basic. It's basically a, a, a cool little beer beer hall area. It's it's a nice nice little little bar too. Uh, if you have the opportunity, if you're in that area up on Capitol Hill to stop in there, um, still looks like a chapel still has the, you know, the dome ceiling and the, um, you know, you can tell where the different aspects of the chapel where the music loft was, uh, is still, still in place there. Well, that's, that's really neat that they kept the, mm -hmm. uh, the names, uh, yeah. the chapel bar, the pine yeah. box kind of funeral yeah. related, funeral related, funeral related names. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so then gonna... from this, this building, uh, from these pictures, it went to uh, Pine Street, which is on Capitol Hill. And then from there, yeah. when that facility closed, uh, merged with Arthur Wright, uh, which okay. is the, the funeral home that's there now that was also built in the 30s. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you haven't been able to tell in looking at this, I, I'm not sure how to use the pause on this, but oh, that's okay. uh, these, these clips just can, can just do a loop. So yeah, uh, yeah. we'll see them a few times as we go through them. But this is the entrance, the actual entrance to the original columbarium that is. And that seeing. is the, yeah, that is the, um, that is the outside entrance of the original columbarium there was actually okay. an exterior door that you just walked through there um that wasn't that was an outside entrance that wasn't the main entrance the main entrance is actually was uh in the chapel upstairs there's a stairwell the stairwell now goes to nothing i don't know if you got any footage of that but um but this is this is some of the um th these niches are actually a little bit newer uh than the ones in the the, the other sections of the columbarium area there um but Right. These were these were kind of more um, utilitarian and, and simple, uh, whereas the others uh, you can tell are much larger, more spacious uh, than than what these are. But this is this is a, a view in the columbarium. You see one of the things that's really cool too is a lot of these um, these urns that you see. That was something that was very popular in uh, in the Pacific Northwest and and uh, in Washington was that these simple containers were the most common. Um, you look around, there's, there's some of those urns that you count, those canister type, type shapes. There are thousands of those in the various columbaria in Seattle alone. Um, those, those mostly were made by, there's a couple of companies there uh, that were based in Seattle that made those. One was the, the Joseph Mayer company. Uh, he made um, his uh, claim to uh, Seattle fame was making street clocks. He was very, uh, 
a craftsman of street clocks. And then uh, there was a silversmith company that made um, home furnishings and uh, tableware and that sort of thing called the Zapfi Silversmith Company. And those were, um, those were also, uh, um, a lot of those urns were made by them as well. You see, those were exterior windows. Any windows you see were actually on the outside of the building, uh, let in natural light. So the everything now uh, in that area is all um, basically lighted by um, artificial light. But when, you know, when it was the, the uh, columbarium and the columbarium was still in use, uh, that was a, uh, a very common, uh, uh, very common to be lighted by, by exterior lighting. So, um, so yeah, definitely a different, uh, different look for sure now. Yeah, most definitely. This was, these were so neat because these were, uh, you know, now we're a lot of the niches that you see, at least interior or inside niches are the glass front style mm -hmm. niches. Yeah. Uh, they're usually made with bronze and, and glass and, and, uh, but these were, these were very, like you said, very utilitarian. They're mm -hmm. concrete boxes, uh, right. essentially. And some of them have glass fronts. Some of them have no fronts. Uh, some of them have granite or marble fronts that are engraved, but urns are just right out in the open. Uh, mm -hmm. There's yeah. uh, no protection on any of these. So, um, of course, they you know they do some very heavy security to to keep right. people's loved ones in safe safekeeping. Yeah. But uh, it's amazing how it was in the days in the past mm -hmm. of you didn't really have that worry of of something happening to the urn once it's at the once it's in the mausoleum there well actually so so here here's something that that is not a common um common understanding is that a lot of these urns were or a lot of these niches were open uh and that's simply because uh the 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 fact that these niches were open, families could come and take the urn home if they wanted to take it home for a holiday or for uh, for a family event or something like that. That right. was actually pretty common in a lot of parts of the country. Uh, that this was, um, you know, this this took place uh, uh, in. I, I know of at least a, a dozen other crematories where families had outside access at their own time and their own in their own uh on their own time and schedule day or night that they could come uh retrieve the urn of their loved one and take it home and and spend time with it or, or whatever they wanted to or just visit if they wanted to leave it there but that's why a number of these are left open as well um also just you know like you said just kind of a permanent storage area uh of the of the cremated remains as well so this room that you're walking in now, that's one of the original rooms. And uh, Amy is pointing there to Mr. Dawes. Uh, he was the first person cremated in the state of Washington, uh, the first person cremated in a modern cremation chamber in the state of Washington, and the first person cremated there. And he's now in the columbarium there in the lower level. So it's fantastic that he's there and he's, he didn't end up you know, somewhere else. Uh, like a lot of the first cremations in, in other parts of the country uh, ended up in you know, other cemeteries because many uh, crematories didn't have columbaria at the time. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that was that one, that was interesting because when we were first down there, this was about as far as we could get with the cell phone coverage. Mm -hmm. so, surprisingly right. enough, back in 1905 when they built this, uh, they didn't uh, adjust for cell phone. Yeah, or wireless I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> why they wouldn't. <laughs> so the original intent for us was to actually have you on and do this live, but yeah. uh, we had yeah. to film it because we just couldn't get any coverage down there. Yeah, makes uh, sense. But it was, it, you know, it was amazing to be down there and talk with you beforehand. Mm -hmm. And this is about as far as we could get into the building with, with that phone conversation. Right. But I said to you, uh, I asked you, J Jason, who's the oldest or the first person uh, that was cremated that you know of? And, and you just immediately, oh, J Mr. J.B. Dawes. And we're standing <laughs> in the room just coincidentally. And I'm, I'm looking at his, at, well, at his niche. Mm -hmm. uh, just coincidentally, when you said that of all places. So uh -huh. I thought that was interesting. I wanted to share yeah, that with a little, you. Uh, little, uh, um, serendipity there. So, yes, um, yes, yes. Um, so, uh, we kind of, 
continued on. Amy was telling us that this room that we're walking into originally was like a little small chapel. And there you can see the, the windows, the outdoor windows, but that was what we're looking at as a fireplace originally. Yeah, it wasn't really a chapel. It was just a just a columbarium room. But yeah, that was a that was a fireplace, right? Where that is sitting. And it actually connected with a fireplace on the upper level uh in the wow. family room, um, where uh uh, it was it was kind of you know the same flue the same chimney as was common mm -hmm. in a lot of the older buildings like that, um, but yeah that was that was originally a fireplace in a sitting room and uh, here in a little bit I'll share my screen with you and show you some of the pictures of this place of what it looked like uh, before yeah. and then the columbarium when it was uh, when it was still in. Uh, in use and operation it's funny to see all of these niches full and then uh, the pictures I have you know have display urns and and haven't been used yet so um, so yeah so the, the, the it's interesting to point out that there's a lot of um, a lot of marble urns in a time where where copper and bronze were were kind of the the driving and metal were the driving styles of urns uh, that right. were in use but um, a lot of these, a lot of these marble urns were uh, were very common, very popular in in Seattle, and especially there at that crematory. Well, they've certainly held up well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, these things look like they're brand new. Yeah, look at that. It's uh, like we're it's like we're there talking about it. Uh, it's like yeah, they're yeah. you're zooming in, but <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. So. Um, there was some question on these metal doors that we're going to walk into and take a look at. Um, but tell me the story on these doors. What are, because uh, this was an interesting this was an interesting conversation that we had. Yeah. So the, these doors, it's it's a common misconception that these doors are the, the actual cremator doors. Um, the 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 cremators were um, of a design by Mr. Wright. Uh, they were on the upper level, uh, the back of the building. Uh, had one single open door, and actually, and and you'll see in the pictures I show later, um, the 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 cremators had kind of an opening in the front of the door where a an arm swung over and these gas jets plugged into the to the door of the cremator and that's where the flame came out um they were they were um uh, Mr. Wright's own design. He was the only person who had those at his uh, crematory there in Seattle and then in Tacoma as well. And the those those uh, cremators are actually still in place down in Tacoma at Oakwood Hill. Uh, Corey Gaffney is the owner of that that facility now. So I encourage you if you can to to link up with him and go check that out because he still has all the original equipment and everything. Obviously not operational, uh, but it's still all there and and closed off behind you know behind closed doors. So yeah, um, absolutely. So one of the things is interesting too about you're you're pointing out here a lot of these uh, these these vases, these glass vases, most of those were actually brought in by families. They, they had the option to bring their own, their own vases in. Uh, the hooks were provided for, uh, for family members to be able to hang vases there. A lot of those were imported. That's something that I, that I found too. Uh, a lot of these urns that you see here, especially early on, there were strong connections with, with Seattle and there still are with a lot of the Asian countries. And so one of the few parts of the country, New York and, uh, and Seattle were two parts of the country that actually imported urns uh, from out of the United States. Uh, most urns at the time were made in the U.S. Uh, by by one of a of about a dozen companies. You know, every everybody and their dog has urns now. Everybody everybody provides urns now. But at that time, uh, there were only about a dozen uh, companies in the U.S. that actually created urns for the purpose of being uh, cremation urns. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's one of the things too, that's interesting here is a lot of these bronze urns were all imported, um, have a lot of Chinese, um, uh, and Japanese accents on them to, to show that they are, um, their connection to the Asian countries as well. But, but yeah, that, that door was not the, uh, not the original cremator doors. That was basically a storage vault for cremated remains. Yeah. Uh, and I, if it, if that indeed ended up coming from a funeral home or a crematory, then that would have come from, uh, would have been added much later from uh, when Butterworth closed uh, from Pine street or when uh, Butterworth was on, uh, on first street, something like that. But, um, 
they're they're too big and too uh, in, a, in an unusual place uh, and not connected with the style of cremators that they had at Arthur Wright uh, to be cremator doors. Okay. One of the things that I found was very interesting. Um, you know, when we first started looking at these video clips, we noticed that the kind of the square shaped niches, the, those utilitarian niches, but when they developed this, and I don't know if it happened over a time period or if this was the original intent, but they did it very similar to what we're seeing now, especially with indoor niches is in the fact that they had larger niches. Uh, they had smaller individual niches. They had all different types of niches. They had square or rectangular shape. They had some with the dome tops that we saw with the uh, uh, in this in this uh, particular clip that shows the the glass vases. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just it was interesting to me that they had that foresight to to think you know what we can do individuals we can do families we can have all sorts of different uh, relation. Uh, together. And these were all different sizes. So like what we're seeing now, these were actually more smaller, uh, indicative of, of single person. There might be maybe two knit, maybe two urns in there, but most of these were, uh, just individual niches, uh, for individual people. And then as you pan, as we panned out, we saw that they were bigger. Right. And, and that was just a matter of, you know, matter of decor. I I would think that uh, it's my understanding that these were some of the earlier ones here, uh, these, these niches, these smaller um, arch niches. Uh, and then they, and then they understood that, you know, there was the opportunity to have, um, you know, more like family niches or something like that, where they could uh, put more than one urn uh, in okay. storage as well. Um, that was definitely one of the, one of the older, uh, older sections, but you know, it, it's funny because I say older, it was probably just a year or so later, uh, that these other sections of the, um, of the columbarium were added on and built mostly of marble and then later of concrete as well. Well, so my phone just, uh, timed out, you know, oh. with the, uh, with the, the picture. So okay. you said you had some uh, pictures that you wanted to yeah. share on yeah, here. And so I think that you're able to log in there and, and do that, but I'd love to see those and some of the history and, and hear those stories as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to share my, um, my screen here uh, and you can see uh, what the facility originally looked like when it, when it was first constructed. Let's do that here. You're going to see my, um, you know, this isn't a, definitely not a uh, um, PowerPoint or anything like that, but you'll see. Uh, do you okay. see can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is the original exterior of the building. Um, so the, the upper level was the chapel. Um, the lower level was the columbarium. The uh, building in the back was the office. Uh, and that was basically a home. Uh, that had been converted into an office it had a very unique, um, you know, big clerestory uh, area there uh, in the in the center. You can see in this area right here. Um, this was a kind of an upper level that that could you could go up into and and see a lot of the the city because um, this is way up on Queen Anne Hill, so it's pretty pretty high up there. Uh, was not nearly as lush with trees either uh, as it is now. Um, so real quick, sorry to interrupt you, but I had a quick question because there's a spot that they showed us here. There was a, a door that they opened up and unlocked mm -hmm. and in and behind that door was the, what, what I was told was the exterior of the original building. Mm -hmm. And when they built the new building, they just built it over the top of this right. old one around. Is it. that right? Is the wall that we're looking at right there, right where your cursor's at, is that the same exterior as what's in that pic as what's in that room that we just it saw? Is. Yep. That's is that the, the, we're, so we're this is where the, the same stairs, wall. yeah, the stairs go to the front door. Okay. Uh, and, and then, um, and, and basically the, the new crematory is, uh, or the new columbarium is this would be right up here. Um, oh my let, me see, let me see if I can show you, uh, give me a second to go over here and find. <laughs> that is so cool because I was just standing there touching yep. that very wall. Touching that very in wall. In the basement yeah. where I just was. Well, I walked over and touched it and I asked Amy, how many people you think walked by this and made a comment? Oh my gosh, they're cremating people behind yeah. this wall. And that's the, the wall we're looking at on the screen. Yeah, this door, the door that you went in would 
be about right here, um, but facing toward the kind of toward the left. Let me see here. <laughs> let me get to the. That's great. I've got I've got a whole lot of photos here, so let me just parse through them real quick and see uh, if I can get some pictures, better pictures for you. But yeah, it's it's fascinating when you go through these old buildings and 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 you're able to actually see the you know, the structure and, Hey, I, you know, I can relate to this because I, you know, I was there, I was in the, in the building, in the room. Let me just yeah, look absolutely. here real quick. All right, here we go. So this is, I mean, let me just pop this over here real quick. And this the, is the title of that's just Seattle crematorium. Yeah, exactly. Didn't even yeah, give was, the name of the play, just Seattle right. Crematorium. <laughs> Seattle Crematorium, yep. So then this is the um, exterior of the building now. Right. And so that wall uh, is basically beneath this building right here. Okay. And then the, the stairs, there's a set of stairs that go down right here on the side that go down and this is all lower level and yeah. Amy's car is in the way. So we can't, but there's <laughs> the door is right, right here on this wall um, going, going in into that area. So yeah, that, that was the, that was the exterior. Um, that was the exterior wall uh, that you see uh, right here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's super. That's, but then that's do you really see neat. too, do you see the chimney here of the crematory? Yeah the stack uh, and it's the same one. Oh my goodness. So that there helps to kind of, that kind of helps to, um, to, to give you an idea as to, uh, you know, what was what at the time. Um, let me see here if there's any others. This is not nearly as pretty of a day a surprise for Seattle. Look at how beautiful that, that, that blue sky is uh, for yeah, it's for it's Seattle. trying to get there today, but it's not quite there. It's Seattle. Well, actually, Washington on the day of this recording is experiencing all sorts of craziness with the weather. Yeah. Uh, we're getting ready to head back across the state, uh, back to the east side, and uh, they just ended up with uh, about nine inches of snow. Oh wow! Uh, here it is, mid-April, where there's not supposed to be snow. They got nine inches last night. So That's crazy. Uh, we might be taking more tours because uh, we might be stuck over here for a while. <laughs> well, let me know. I'll get you some get you some contacts there. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so here you can see these are the stairs that go down, and then that hallway that I was talking about is actually behind this uh, this wall right. Okay. Here. And yeah. then the door is is right on the other side of the wall right here. So so that would be the original facility, the original building. Um, and you can see actually see the the original chimney there has a little better view of it. But that is the original original uh, of the of the building. You can see there it's it's exactly the same. Wow. Yeah. That is so neat. So then really so then one of the things too uh, that that is uh, surprising is that this is a um, this is a uh, this this is the the upper level of the chapel. Um, yeah. This is where the chapel. This sits right over the entire columbarium area. Um, the uh, the the area that looked like a that looked like a living room with a with a fireplace um, that is over on this side. And then the uh, the area that had the stairs that kind of went up to nowhere, those stairs would have come out at that door right there. Amazing! Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's all. You know, again, it's it's all it's all connected there. Uh, and then this area back here goes into a sitting room for the family. And then the the cremators are actually backed to this door here. Let's zoom over. So that's the that's the reception hall and sitting room. Uh, this is the back of the where the minister would stand to speak, uh, and then the the entry hall to where the cremators are is here. Um, that's the family sitting room there, which would be to the right of the chapel, um, and then this is the the room that goes back along the side of the building to the cremator area there. Now, now, here's where you can see these these interesting jets that that swing out and then uh -huh. go into the the door of the cremators. Um, it's not a um, uh, you know it's not like the traditional ones that we see in most places where, um, but these are gas jets that they literally would 
turn these jets on. They would insert the arm and turn the jets on and then, you know, light it from, from the inside, throw, a, throw something in there that would uh, help to ignite the gas. Well, that's unpleasant, very safe. unpleasant uh, <laughs> uh, way of cremation, certainly in, in that area. But that was luckily the, this was the only place that those those cremators were used. This in Tacoma, um, and then here here's the lower level um, that you can see. Um, this is this is just a few years after the crematory and columbarium were completed. Um, this is looking from. So let's see here. This is the the room where the stairs the stairs would be over to the left behind these niches here okay. um, and then this is that center room with the columns and then this is the room over here where the fireplace would be and then it's this fascinating. is there's the room with the columns that you saw and there's those mm -hmm. those curved niches there in the back yeah the very same ones can you, is there a way to zoom in on that just a little bit? Cause it, is it come through or it does, it doesn't. So, so the, you the sad part, the yeah. Uh, the sad part about this is that this is all um, printed. It's that dot matrix kind of printing. Right. Uh, and so you have to, to, to keep from getting that weird pattern when these are scanned, I had to, had to put a setting on it that made it a little less clear. Um, but yeah. no matter how, how clear it was, it wouldn't be clear enough to, to see much there. So, um, when, when was that taken? Do you have any idea? Was that actual um, picture? so I'm guessing this would have been taken about 1910 would be, yeah. would be the, the guess that I had. Um, let me see if I have a picture in my other photo. <laughs> it looks the same today. Yeah. It's, it's, it's eerie how, how similar it is. The only difference is they have fluorescent lights in here now. Um, I tried to reproduce some of these photos. Um, it was very difficult to do, um, to get the right angle of them, but let me see here. Um, oh, and there's also right in the middle of this room, there is a, uh, support beam that was installed as well. And I'll show you that here. Oops. Let's see. And see here there's that same room right yeah and then this is that support beam right in the right in the center so it wasn't easy to it wasn't easy to to reproduce the photos for for that reason uh, and that's not definitely not the only one in there um but oh but here this is a this is pretty close of the uh, let's see here This is pretty close of this room here. There you go. That's what it looks like now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, all it, all it did was add color. <laughs> yeah. Add color and, um, and, and yeah, that's the same picture a hundred years later. Yep. Amazing. Indeed. Yeah. So, so you can see there's, there's, again, there's a lot of this, a lot of this history here. Um, I was trying to see, so, um, this person right here uh, passed away in 1907, 1906, 1909. So you can see that's about that's about the time frame. Unfortunately, they did not date the the um, uh, they did not date the the photo or the booklet that these came from. That's in in my collection. So yeah. I can only date it by um, by the the dates and then also the the when everything was completed with. Uh, with Tacoma as well. Tacoma sure. is, it's even, it's even more uh, new, I guess, in Tacoma. Um, in fact, I'll show you Tacoma here. So the, the crematories that were here though, uh, I know we talked about those gas jets that mm -hmm. those were in Tacoma. Is that right? Or were the uh -huh. gas jets here on the cream? Both, both. Tacoma okay. and and here, yeah. Did they so, use a coal at all? Was it a? Did they ever do like coal cremations? No, it was, it was oil, oil up here. Oil, at this time. okay, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All these were oil. I say gas jets just because that that's the best way to to describe right. it. They were they were made of oil. So this is the um, Tacoma crematory there on the left. Yeah, uh, the chapel of. This this organ is actually still there. Uh, Corey Corey Gaffney still has that organ. Um, their little sitting room. You can see it's a much smaller facility uh, as compared to um, 
uh, compared to uh, Seattle. But that's mm-hmm. the there's the exterior showing their entrance to their uh, crematory there, and then this is the the cremator area, and you can see there's the the gas jets. The jets, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So so and 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 also something that's that's unique here is you see this roller. Well, this was placed here, and the the casket was actually put on the floor on top of this roller uh-huh. to be placed within. So now everything is a little bit higher and, you know, you can use a, a beer or church trucks. And in fact, most of the, most of the historic crematories in the country have the same kind of, of thing uh, where the, the cremators are a little bit higher off the floor, but, um, but wow. these were, these had an entire basement. This whole area was an entire basement that, um, uh, that could, you could go down in, into the basement. So yeah, there you go. That's that's kind of the kind of the overall of the of the the building, the exterior of those two buildings. Those are the first two crematories in the uh, in the state of Washington. Uh, also, the second and third, respectively, for uh, the um, Pacific Northwest. Amazing. Yeah. So we're gonna get down one of these days. Corey's uh, Corey's already told us that we can come in, and Good. it's just a matter of finding the right time. But what I'd like to do with you, Jason, is do this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, only we'll we'll head down and see Corey and and uh, there at Gaffney's and and kind of walk through that again. Yeah. Uh, and 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 look at the comparison. But this has just been absolutely fascinating. Uh, I know many people uh, listen to the show, but this is definitely one you're gonna want to go onto the YouTube page and watch to see these pictures and <laughs> yeah. and these video clips because this is some pretty cool stuff that that we're seeing right here. Uh, certainly uh, a, an amazing thing to to do, you know to be here in this in just the history of of where we're at. It, it's yeah. just it's it floors me. So well that's thank the you thing. So much. Yeah absolutely and, and that's the thing with Seattle too is that the, the history there's so much history there and so much uh so much that that occurred there with the respect to the history of uh of cremation in in the area there's you know there's a whole depth of of you know some of the some of the the things that were happening there that a lot of the people in the uh the the cremation movement in other parts of the country just considered deplorable and horrible that they were they were taking place because um you know there were there were competitions of price there were um you know competition uh, between funeral directors got really nasty and really ugly and um, the all of the major players in funeral service in uh, in the the city of Seattle actually you know they were all all funeral homes that's something that's unique to the state of Washington is that um, the the crematory that was here was built by the cremation society and then the one in Tacoma was built in a cemetery but then the next several crematories after that were open in the basements of funeral homes by by funeral homeowners who wanted to stay on the edge of what people wanted um, and there was a lot of innovation. Uh, each of the each of the funeral homes uh, in their basements had columbaria. Um, each of them had uh, you know places for for services to happen on the usually on the upper levels, and then the the cremators in the lower levels of the funeral homes. So. Um, so that that started kind of um, that started changing things when when Arthur Wright decided he was going to get into the um, into the funeral business and start offering funerals to the to the public instead of just cremations. Um, the funeral homes in the area started to get a little upset and they started opening their own crematories as well. So then before long, all of these major players that were funeral homes had their own crematories. So these other crematories didn't know what to do with their their cremations, or these other funeral homes didn't know what to do with their cremations. So they teamed with uh, Washelli, uh, which is now Evergreen Washelli, uh, right. in the 1920s to open a uh, crematory on their grounds that was kind of... Um, kind of non connected with a funeral home. And so, um, so that's, that's when things kind of changed a little bit in, in that area for, for funeral homes providing cremation. So, um, but, but again, all of that is all, um, all connected. There's, there's all sorts of, 
you know, ins and outs that go along with that, that would, we probably should plan another show to, to talk more about <laughs> that because, and it's, it's funny because there's so many like scandals and so many, but, but it was never about families. It was always, you know, all these funeral directors and funeral homes that were, you know, they wanted to be one up on their, on their competitors. Uh, very, very strong competition there, uh, there as well. So you're saying nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed, uh, except I would say that then things were a little bit, a little bit different. Um, uh, one, one funeral director um, uh, was accused of shooting a, a, an official who came to inspect his facilities. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> one, one said that he, uh, one was accused of taking advantage of, of um, the, during the Spanish influenza of, you know, so many people were dying that he wasn't providing the casket that, that the government um, suggested. And so therefore uh, he was charging families more. And then there was this huge lawsuit that, that went on from there. So, I mean, just all sorts of, all sorts of things like that, that um, it, it creates this very interesting and, and um, eerie almost history of, of funeral service and cremation in, in Washington, which, um, you know, again, is all part of the, the growth and the, the story. I always talk about the story of cremation and, and this is definitely, uh, definitely part of that story in that part of the country. Well, we're going to get back together again and do yeah, another do conversation. Uh, definitely. I, I actually want to do one with, with Corey, but I, now you got me intrigued on doing one on the history of uh, the scandals. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that might and, be really exciting. And there's, there's folks in the, there's folks in the area who, who know a lot more, a lot more funeral side of history. I can definitely help you on the cremation side, but um, the funeral, the funeral history side of things uh, in, in that area. So let me know. I'll, I'll drop some names for you that you can reach out to some some local folks there that can can tell the and people who actually worked at the at the facilities uh, at one point um so so yeah it's good stuff well that's great well jason thank you thank you for uh taking some time out of your day uh to do this with us i know it's a little bit later where you're at than it is where we are but uh this has been so much fun and um Thank you so much. We'll, we'll be uh, doing this again. Uh, I'm going to get Corey involved so we can get down to Tacoma and, and see their place. And uh, we'll get you back on the phone and talk about it as well. Awesome. Keep me posted. And, and I'm happy to uh, happy to, to answer any questions. Um, of course, anyone who, who is interested in, um, in the history of cremation, feel free to, to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, you can find me on the Cana website, also on the National Museum of Funeral History website, uh, or you can uh, simply email me at uh, it's cremation historian at hotmail.com. So easy as that. Uh, love to, love to hear any of your questions about the history of cremation. Beautiful. Thank you, Jason, so much. We'll talk Thank with you, you soon. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye now.